welcome back to my channel. So I'm back in England. So I finally made it back a few days ago. So I am currently on my quarantine period, but it was a little bit stressful coming home. So for those of you who don't follow my Instagram, I unfortunately got COVID um, just before I was meant to be leaving Portugal. So I had to miss my flight back to England and obviously recover. So it's been an interesting few weeks and of course I was finishing my second term of my masters and uh, I actually it coincided with my last deadline that I started to get symptoms so I had finished all my exams and deadlines then I came down with COVID it was just perfect but these things happen and I'm completely fine now so thank you for all of you who have messaged me or emailed me sorry if I haven't been able to get back to you but I thought I would make a video explaining that I am a-okay now, I just can't taste or smell anything. So if any of you have had COVID and lost your sense of smell and taste, how long did it take for you guys to get it back? Because it's now been three weeks since I uh, was positive. So yeah, I still have absolutely no sense of smell. Like I can't smell burning, I can't smell chemicals. It's kind of weird, but um, I'm hoping that within like two months I should get it back. But coffee I can't taste, chocolate I can't taste, so it's a bit of a sad eating and drinking time for me at the moment, but I'm managing fine and I know it's it's not important in comparison to what's happening. But I thought I would kickstart my channel again, because I know I've been a bit MIA for the past few weeks, um, with a kind of like, I'm back and do a bit of a show and tell of everything I found in Portugal, because of course, I found some rocks in Portugal and I thought you guys would like to see what I got. So we've got a mixture of plants, fossils, rocks, other things I bought and I just wanted to show you everything basically because I thought you guys would appreciate it. And before we start, how amazing is my dress? I just wanted to share because you guys like match my energy on this type of stuff so I love it. So the first non-fossil, non-mineral related item is this. So I managed to find this. It's a Jurassic Park clipboard, but look, it's literally got like ammonites imprinted on it, claws, like it is amazing. And it even comes with like original Jurassic Park paper and a pen. And my plan for this is to try and like convert it into a cover for my notepad. So when I'm like at university, I can be taking notes in just about the coolest notebook anyone could have. I just, I'm obsessed with it. So I want to turn it into kind of like a reusable cover for my notebook for the entire future because I never want to use anything else now. But it is unfortunately the, I don't know, the um, clip here, it, it's not working. I don't think it's ever been unclipped since the person got this. So I need to give this a bit of TLC, but the cover is what I fell in love with and I think I can make it work. But it literally, like, look at all these ammonites on it. I'm just... How perfect is that? So I'm gonna make something out of this. I haven't worked out what, but we will get there. And then this is my Zabrina plant that is just thriving, mainly thanks to my mother, because of course I've not been home the past few months, so she's been looking after it and it's, it's doing very well. So I just thought it should be in the video. Just look at it, I love it. I'm so happy to be home, guys. Like. I can't explain to you how nice it is to be home. Like being an international student is amazing and I'm so grateful for all the opportunities I have, especially during the current pandemic. But I mean, like it, you kind of on paper, it just looks like this amazing thing traveling, but you kind of don't think about being apart from your family and like having to always live out of a suitcase. Like it comes with a lot of pressure and stresses. So I really treasure the time when I come home and especially after having COVID, to just be back, it's like, it's just amazing the feeling. So Fossil Friday will be back to normal. I'm back to normal. It's just really nice to be home. So I'm really, really grateful for that. But since I've been back, I have re-prepped this fossil. So I did do a video where I prepped it and I took all the like mud layer off the front here. Um, so I'll link that down below if you haven't seen it. But I went to put this on display in my room because I'm like redoing everything. I'll do videos on it in a few weeks so you can see how I put all my fossils in my room because I want them all on display and that takes a lot of space. So we're getting uh, jazzy with the shelving. But this one, I went to put it on a shelf and it was like crumbling because it's literally made of this like mud rock. 
So you can see around the edge. So I smothered it. I literally drowned this rock in paraboloid. So I've like completely merged all the edges. I don't know if you can see. Like I literally, I spent a few hours dripping paraboloid down the edges to completely seal this rock together. And I've got to say it worked. So it used to be a light gray and now it's a dark gray, but I kind of, I'm loving it. Like I think it looks amazing. And we'll see if it does it for you. It stands up on its own. Like, look at that. <laughs> Can a fossil get any more perfect when it stands up without any need for a stand? Like, I love it. And it's fairly stable. Like, on the shelf, I'll put something just in case because I don't want to, it's fragile. But it's just amazing. So that one I didn't find in Portugal. For anyone new to my channel, that one is not a Portuguese ammonite. I think if I put that in my luggage, uh, the plane would probably not take off. Well, saying that, the other ones weighed a ton anyway. My suitcase was 10 kilograms over the limit. But luckily I managed to just layer up, put my walking boots on, change stuff into my hand luggage. And uh, I was, you know, I had a very nice check-in person. They were very lenient with me. They were just like, right, I'm closing my eyes and I'll let it through now. So I managed to get away with a little bit extra, but uh, it was stressful. So keeping on the fossils, these are now ones that I found, this is actually in Spain, so these aren't, oh wait, is this one Spain? Oh, this is, yes, it was Spain, yes, <laughs> I had to think then because I did a field trip all around Portugal and in Spain, so I have to like kind of think which, where I found each one, but uh, the fossils I found, they're really cool, they're trace fossils, so I'm used to finding like ammonites and body fossils mainly, um, but in Portugal and Spain I was finding more trace fossils, so it gives me like a new area, um, which was really awesome, so this is what's known as a Dedalus, now we believe it was made by kind of like a worm creature, and they are really amazing when you find like the whole kind of sequence of it, I found kind of like the top point of this fossil, so this is like the burrow it would have made into the sand. So you can see like the ridging on the edge here and how this part of the rock here like overlaps over this one. So it's almost like a cone shape and it's like a spiral, but they weren't symmetrical, like they're not like uh, the seashells you find in the uh, oceans today. They were kind of all over the place, these burrows, and like sometimes another worm would cut into it. So. All we know is that the organism that made these is completely soft bodied. So we don't have the remains or fossilized um, versions of this creature because they never got preserved. So we just get the trace fossils. So trace fossils are really interesting because we, if we don't know the creature, we, we have to kind of like infer it from what they leave behind, which is this. So I just thought this was a really cool piece and I love that it's the top of the burrow. So that was another reason why I just had to get that one so that's pretty cool and then I found some Cruziana fossils now there's some amazing examples of Cruziana but I didn't find you know some of the exceptional ones but what's really cool is these are made by trilobites so there's a moth flying around my feet so I got distracted yeah so these are made by trilobites and they're the, tra the they're trace fossils again so they're the tracks they would leave in the sand in the ocean so I found two or two and a little one actually I'll move that one here. So this is one of them. I'll insert a picture afterwards as well so you can see what the amazing ones look like. But you can see up here, it's got like a groove in the middle and then all these lines either side which would have been made by the many legs that trilobites have. So there's one here, then we've got another one here and here. So you can see there's quite a few tracks in this one piece, which is pretty cool. And then I also found this one, but it does have some lichen on the surface, but I can remove this if I would like to. But you can see the burrow is literally directly underneath it. But you can see the lines here, the leg lines, the striations, they're really clear on this one. So this one's like nicely preserved. I just need to try and get the lichen off, which I think you can do with bleach, but I need to do a bit of research into that. And then this is the one that I should have put in my luggage because this is what a suitable rock weighs. <laughs> so this would have been much smarter, but this is just a really lovely tiny piece. And you can see here is a Cruziana where you've got that groove in the middle and the two kind of sections either side. And then all these other uh, lines are other burrows made by different creatures. So this is a lovely little piece with a lot going on. So love that one. So they're all the 
trace fossils I found. Then I did find this lovely little um, gastropod fossil, but just how perfect is that? I literally, I didn't need to make it any smaller, it was just lying like this in Portugal, just waiting for me to find it. So I love, like, it's in a really coarse kind of limestone, and the gastropod is just beautiful, how it's kind of stre stretched out. So I really, really love that one. And I'm trying to do all the fossils first, and then I'll move on to the other stuff. I'm a nightmare. I know. <laughs> so this is a really cool piece that I found. Um, it's made up of lots and lots of little shells. So the more you look, the more you can see them. So it's literally all fossil. So it's, they're all like clustered together. I hope this is picking up on my camera. It's really cool and it's weirdly extremely lightweight. Like it's not very dense. So this is quite a nice piece. And then, okay, these are I'm obsessed with. So I found crinoids before, but I've not found like perfect stars like this. And so a crinoid, it was an animal and the stem can sometimes be like a five pointed star. And when the crinoids die, the, uh, the stem becomes segmented and it breaks apart. So you can find perfect star fossils. And they like at first glance, you probably think, oh, it's a starfish, but it's a little crinoid stem. So, okay, this isn't gonna work. I'm gonna have to, sh I'll flip my camera over so you guys can actually see these without me tipping them all over the floor. <laughs> okay, so these are the crinoids that I found. So you can see they are perfect stars. And you can see on this one that they were stacks of stars. So you can see how they kind of break apart. So sometimes they stay in clusters. Sometimes you just find a single one and you can find whole remains of a crinoid and they are amazing. But that's a goal for another day. So I've just got these a lovely selection of the stars and they get weathered out of the rocks because they're so tiny. It's very hard to extract them yourself. So when they get weathered, they're, you know, a little more um, damaged and you can tell they've been eroded, but they're still very clearly stars. So I think they're really cool. Then these are the only ammonites I found in Portugal. I found a little one and a little fragment of one, but I didn't go to Portugal to find the same stuff. So I'm not mad about that. And then this is part of a belemnite. So I'll try and get it in the light. There you go, just a nice little piece. And then I, f I wanted to fill this jar up with all the little belemnite fragments. Um, but I didn't find too many, but I'll fill them up with ones from England. I just thought this jar made for a really nice kind of storage pot for little fossils. So there are all the fossils I found. And then the rest of the stuff in here is like little shells. Oh, and there is a shark tooth here, but that's from Morocco. Um, that was at a dinosaur park in Portugal. They were giving out shark teeth, so of course. I had to have one and then I found these beautiful shells which look at that it kind of matches my nail unintentional but love it <laughs> and so these I found in Lisbon so they're just really pretty shells I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet but I just really liked the different types I mean this one's really cool I think it'll pick it up you can see all these little ridges and lumps on it just amazing detail and then there's also some amazing colors like the colours of shells really interest me. Oh, poop. Where did it go? You can see on the little one here, it's like orange. I'm trying to catch the light. There you go, you can kind of see it now. Stunning! For those of you who don't know, I'm just as obsessed with shells as I am fossils, so that's no surprise for that. So I'm going to now flip you guys over and we can look at the last things I got. Oh, but before I do, I'll just give you an update on Herbert. I missed you. Zabrina, I missed you. And of course, Grassman, who is no longer got grass in his head. So unfortunately the grass died. So we planted this like other plant in, but I think it's dying. The roots don't quite look right. So I think I need to either put more soil in or something, but he can have a different hairdo next week. But they're really, really happy. I think they're enjoying the sunshine we're having. So you guys are all welcome. I definitely brought that back with me when I landed from Portugal. <laughs> So I do apologise, I expected this video to just be a lovely, you know, sweet, short video showing what I found in Portugal, but the more I show, the more I realise I found a lot in Portugal. And also I haven't spoken to you all for a few weeks, so we're just having a nice, nice catch up, but I do hope you're all doing well. And the next thing I'm going to show you, these are really cool. 
So this is a phenomenon that hasn't actually been studied that much as far as I know. So it's when there's, it's almost like a birthing stone. So it's a rock that has two hardnesses. So when it gets eroded, some parts are more resistant. So the rock almost gives birth to little pebbles that are harder than the surrounding rock. And it just so happens these pebbles are also made of a lovely sparkly mineral. So they also look really like special. So there's like this bigger one here. And then there's like these smaller nodules as well. So they're really cool. So they, in like mythology, they, they were like spoken about as being like um, really good for fertility and stuff like that because it's a rock giving birth to a rock. So obviously that means it can help other creatures give birth to offspring. Anyway, that's I believe what the myth myths uh, say about them. But they just look like this, but they're just really unusual. Like when you, if you ever get a chance to see it, it happens, it occurs only in a few places around the world and it's just the most peculiar thing. You just see these little like nodules getting eroded out of rocks. I just, I find it amazing. So I found that those are three and then the final thing I have to show you is all the salt that I got and even though I can't smell or taste, I can taste salt. So this was a good thing to find. So I went down a salt mine in Portugal and I did film a video. I just didn't get around to editing it because it, when we came back from the field trip, we had all our deadlines and so, so on. You guys know the story. Um, so I found these lovely pieces of salt. So you can see here. So I have a salt lamp from when I went down a salt mine in Poland. So they're going to go next to my salt lamp. But they're just really fun pieces and they're like a mixture of pink salts and darker and they're just really cool. So this is literally just a bag of salt from, they did tell me the age of it but I won't give you any spoilers until I post the video. So maybe that's what I'll post this Friday. I will edit the tour of a salt mine because they were really lovely and let me film down below and round all the galleries and it was so interesting. It was really, really lovely. So that's what's going to happen on Fossil Friday this week. So I hope you guys are excited. So I just wanted to do an update video and say hello again. So I've missed filming like, it's been a while. But before I go, I just wanted to mention that I'm also going to be starting a new series separate to Fossil Friday, where once a week I come out with a tutorial on how to make something to do with dinosaurs. So it's going to be dinosaurs or fossil related craft activities every single week, but the level of difficulty will vary. But I just wanted to get your kind of feedback on that because I know there are children who watch my channel, whether it's through their parents or on their own, and I just I think it'll be really fun to do a kind of new series. So I just thought I'd give you a little heads up that that's going to be coming to my channel in a few weeks and I'm so excited to start it. But um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll link my Instagram down below if you'd like to follow me on there and also the video to when I prepped this fossil if you'd like to watch that. But um, look after yourselves. I hope you're all doing well and are safe and I will be back with more literally in a few days. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you on Friday.